I can finally talk now. Here, they're everywhere. Who you ask? Maybe it's more of a what. Today, current local will be rain. Machines of all kinds. An exhaustive number of vending machines. It's more than a way to shop. It's the new bar, it's the new waitress, and it's the evening's entertainment, literally. They're intelligent too, robots. I'd really like to try a hamburger someday. Haha. <laughs> With personality and purpose, moving beyond the fun and the trendy, many Japanese scientists say a robotics revolution is underway. Some experts predict within just a decade or two, nearly half of the jobs in Japan could be done by robots. A practical answer, perhaps, to a shrinking and aging population with one in four Japanese over age 65. My mission is to meet these new robot citizens and figure out exactly how they fit into an evolving Japan. So, we begin here. <laughs> meet Churi, my personal robot in Japan's first hotel run mostly by robots. Good night, rest well. Tomorrow's morning. No, really, right from when you enter. Welcome to Hino Hotel. I will confirm your check-in information. Will Ripley. Please input your reservation name. Got my room key. A 264. The process is now complete. A robot checks you in. It's your concierge. I'm really hungry. Can you recommend a good place to get lunch? There are many restaurants inside the park where you can enjoy a wide variety of dishes. There's a ridiculously slow-moving robot porter. We're really moseying along here. Facial recognition technology lets me into my room. Machines even handle the dining experience. Should we get the nuggets, the hot dog, or the fries? At first, it all seems a bit strange. In fact, the name of the place, Henna, translates to strange hotel. But it's what Takayoshi Oe believes the future of budget hotels can look like. We introduce robots to cut the human costs by letting them take care of what humans do. Ideally, we would like to establish a good business model and then venture out to the international market. Henna Hotel was almost a $20 million investment, but one they believe is paying off. We run this hotel with one-fourth of the staff that conventional hotels use. So comparing the cost saved with staff with the initial investment in robots, the initial investment can be covered in less than 10 years. And not hiring as many human employees, they claim, saves them an additional $600,000 a year. With 144 rooms and a maximum capacity of 500 guests, it's surprising how few people you actually see. No sweat. But can robots really replace the human touch? Of course, it's not that we don't have any human staff. So if there's any problem, human staff will come forward to deal with the issue. But there is a plus side to having robot staff. Robots can provide a certain level of quality service to any guest, regardless of age or nationality. This all may seem a bit odd to you, but this vision of the future actually seems to work in Japan. In America, I grew up with movies like The Terminator. But here, people are used to machines, even friendly towards them. And while it's amusing to have a velociraptor at your service, is this really what all robots will eventually look like? My next stop brings me to Kyoto to meet one of Japan's leading robotics researchers, Hiroshi Ishiguro, and what he calls his robot twin. This is my twin brother, you know, this is a teleoperated android. I'm using this android for giving a lecture here. You know, usually I'm in Osaka University, I'm, but I can access to the internet and I'll teleoperate this guy. So you hold meetings using your twin. People sit and listen to you teach with the robot. Yeah. Geminoid, Ishiguro's robotic doppelganger, has traveled the world. Controlled remotely, a microphone captures his voice and a camera tracks his facial movements. So when the operator tilts his head, Geminoid follows. You feel like, that, you know, people will become a cut, people will get accustomed to this, people will get used to this. Mm -hmm. I think so, I really think so, yeah. yeah. It's as much a study in humans as it is in robots, questioning fundamentally what makes a human human. Dr. Hiroshi believes the more that his androids resemble us, from the physical to the mental, the more likely they'll be accepted by us. She is your brand new 
creation. Yes. And she has artificial intelligence. So why, how is that different from previous androids? She can have uh, some conversational functions and she can understand the human voice and, uh, and, 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 and according to the uh, pre-programmed scenarios, she can you know, talk with uh, the people. You just met Erica. She's designed to be a 23-year-old woman. And in person, she's, well, surprisingly attractive, if you can say that about a robot. So what role do you envision Erica playing in our future society? I think uh, the, uh, she can be a receptionist and the, uh, well, companions. She can do the many things for us. How many years before we see Erica? Soon, I think. I guess I had to give it a go. Hello, my name is Erica. May I ask your name? My name is Will. It's nice to meet you, Will. Let's learn a little about each other. To start off, where are you from? I'm from the United States. Ah, the United States. I'd really like to try a hamburger someday. Haha. <laughs> Erica clearly controls the conversation. Sorry about that. The craziest date. I got a little carried away. She seems so real, but at the same time, so programmed. It's eerie. A feeling researchers have described through the uncanny valley, that uncomfortable sensation when a robot looks and acts human, but isn't human enough. From human-like robots to something a little more robotic. Back in Tokyo, I made a stop at MJI, the company that created Tapia, a robot assistant for your home. It's kind of like a smartphone, but more approachable and friendly, modeled to be a companion for the elderly, especially those living alone. Aging people population is increased uh, year by year, so not only in Japan. So, but uh, they don't have friends, they don't have work, they don't have communication. So I think it's a problem. It's a very big issue. Bringing Tapia home will cost you a little more than a new iPhone. Trying to keep it low cost and cute is their strategy for success. Do you think robots like this will be as popular as cell phones? Yeah. Why? In Japan, robots are very familiar to us. So, actually, in the childhood, robot is a hero. Robot is a friend. Back home, I decided to give Tapia a trial run. Tell me the news headlines. Top story. Tell me a joke. What animal is best at hitting a baseball? A bat. <laughs> These creators are taking the first leap, innovating in a country that's continuing to test the boundaries, to push the limits between humanity and technology, and in the process, redesigning the modern city.